right on that. Maybe later, but let's show it to everybody first. This is what we're going to be working on today. This is one of my most favorite shop accessories. I got this idea out of one of the woodworking magazines. I actually had two of these before in our old shop, but I gave them to my dad because I didn't think we would need them anymore, but he certainly enjoyed those. He loved them. What I love most about them is they're held together with biscuit joinery, dados and rabbits, and a few bread nails, and that's it. They're really fun to build. They're fairly easy. You do need a biscuit joiner or dado set, but uh, they're fairly easy to do, and we're going to show you how to do it. It's a lot of fun. One cool thing about this project is you can build it out of just one sheet of wood. I like to use uh, birch plywood because it stays nice and straight. Uh, a little bit more cost effective way to do it would be MDF, which works just as well. Um, you can basically build this any dimension you want it to be, but since mine obviously is kind of particular, I'm just going to give you the measurements that I got. The whole thing's going to be about 19 and a half inches wide and 32 inches long. And I want it to match up with the height of my tabletop, which is 34 inches. So I'm going to cut my styles to 31 and a quarter inches long to compensate for the height of my casters. These will be the rails for each end frame. These are 2 and 3 quarters of an inch wide and 14 inches long. These are the styles for each end frame. These are only two and a quarter of an inch wide because uh, you have to compensate for the dados that will be on the side frames. These are the rails for each side. These are again two and three quarters of an inch by 26 and a half inches long. And then again the styles for each end. Again 31 and a quarter by uh, two and three quarters. Okay, this will be an end frame. Again, these are only two and a quarter of an inch wide here because you've got to compensate for the dados on the sides. The only thing that's really important here is just to get these rails at the very top and bottom. And this one in the middle you can put basically wherever you want for your shelf. If you want to put a particular tool in there that needs so much clearance, go ahead and allow for it. We're going to be using biscuit joinery, so what you want to do is get a combination square. And you don't have to be perfectly centered, but just kind of eyeball it to where you are in the center. And mark a line for your biscuit joiner. And what I like to do is number each spot. Just so you're the same all the way around. I'm going to be using a number 20 biscuit, which fits in there with a little bit of room left. Just make sure your piece is clamped to your table and set your biscuit joiner to number 20. Once you get all those slots cut, you get your pieces laid out again. I like to uh, just kind of run a bead of glue in that slot and put the biscuit in there. So it's swelled up a little bit from the humidity around here. There you have it. And then just like to put a smear of glue down the side and a little bit on that end of the wood. And this is where those marks line up again. Make sure that's nice and flush on the bottom. from there. I 
don't have a lot of long clamps, so I'm just going to grab this right in between these two rails. That way the pressure kind of equalizes between the two. Just tight enough to get everything to make contact. It's a quick tip for you here. The glue takes about a half an hour to set up. I like to leave it sit for about an hour because these are going to have to be passed over the table saw for a dado. Instead of trying to remember how long they've been sitting, I just write the time right on them. When I get them clamped up that way, I can just look at them and see how long they've been sitting. While the glue's drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut these pieces out for the shelves. For Joe, because I love him, and he's awesome, and he works so hard all the time and never gets a break. This is uh, Bessie's band clamp. If you do any kind of framing glue ups like this, definitely worth the money right there. Okay, so we have our dado blade in here for three quarters of an inch wide and about a quarter of an inch high. That is important because the uh, Measurements that you got for your shelves will not fit if it's a shallower or deeper data. So what you want to do is establish the top. I got this a little bit lower than center, but what I want to do is come down about a quarter of an inch so that that shelf has a little lip on it. Depending on what you're doing, you can bring that shelf down to here, basically wherever you want it. But then we're going to just grab it the bottom. All right, so on the sides, we've got this cut. You want to wrap it, each end of it. That's where the difference for the uh, styles on the end frames came in to be a half of an inch narrower because you're gonna compensate for this quarter inch lip on each side of this. And we're also going to wrap at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna start actually assembling this now. A lot of people will clamp these together with glue, but I like to just use brad nails with glue because it's faster, and I don't mind a couple of brad nail holes in shop furniture. Some people will use these, or would like to use these in their kitchen. You want to use a better grade of wood, do things a little bit different, but it's just a thought. So I'm going to have my shop hookie here do that while I uh, actually just drink a beer. Could you please get me one while you're not doing anything? <laughs> right there! Oh my god! Why would you? Oh, you lunatic. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Quick shelf tip. Always have peroxide on hand. Anyway, we're going to start assembling this. If the wood that you're using gets left out in the rain like mine did, it'll warp up a little bit and that's fine. But make sure when you're putting the face frame together to put them all together to warp the same way so that when you do your dado cuts you don't have to try to force them down. You do the bow down so you can keep it over the dado. But anyway, we're just going to glue this up and put a few staples in it. I got it, thank you. <laughs> I will not be asking any more favors from you for the rest of the evening.
for the end, go ahead and glue it up, but don't put any brad nails going up this side. The reason for that is if this panel isn't exactly right, you're going to need a little bit of floating room in there. And if you brad this to the thing, you're going to have a little bit harder time getting the side face frame on there. to the surfaces. also that these shelf panels are 18 and a half inches by 31 inches for the measurements that I'm using here. But anyway, go ahead and glue up the bottom now. data blade at three quarters of an inch and rabbited all four sides of our top. So only about a fourth is going to show over the top which will line it up very nicely with our assembly table. I'm just going to run a bead of glue around all of the top edges. I put this on the floor to make it easier to brand nail it down. It's a little shaky from being nailed to the table. Okay, so almost the last thing to do is just put the casters on it. I'm just using these little two inch casters because I don't plan on there being a lot of weight on here and these work just fine. Of course you can use any configuration of casters, but I had these laying around and I'm not going to have a lot of weight on this cabinet. So I got swiveling casters in the front, straight ones in the back. It's a good idea to put locking casters on here, but I don't plan on using any kind of bench mounted tools on it. Okay, what we're going to do next is actually make a handle for this little cart. I have here a inch and a quarter dowel, and I have some inch and three quarter pieces of plywood. The length isn't important as long as it's better than ten inches or so. And all we're going to do is just draw a half a circle on the end that we will cut or sand off just to make it a little bit more appealing. Make it look like you took some time on it. cut the length of my dowel about a half of an inch longer than the width of the cart. So I'm only going to go in with a Forstner bit the same size as the dowel, in this case it's inch and a quarter. I'm going to go down a quarter of an inch. So I've set the stops on my drill press to do that. I've 
gun and drew a reference line on here so that I know where to stop the glue. All we're going to do is glue these on the sides of the frame. Just put a nice little amount on there. And uh, I'm not going to be real precise because, again, it's a shop cart, but you just want to get it as close as you can using the lines that are already there. I'm not worried about it being real pretty. All I'm going to do here is just put some glue around the outer, outer edge of the dowel because I don't know if the edges are going to, or the ends rather, are going to meet up in the holes that I drilled. Stick that there and then put some glue in this one. I guess you could put it around the end of the dowel again, but I don't feel like doing it that way. Put the glue on the inner edge. It don't hurt to add a couple of grabs there. Okay, now I'm gonna go see if Penny won't sand it for me. Okay, um, I'm going to just go over this real quick with 120 grit sandpaper, and then I'll follow it up with 220 to make it nice and smooth, and then we'll probably round these sharp edges off just to make it nice and smooth to the touch. This is a very versatile, very stable shop asset, and you will love it if you build one. What I like the most about this is just how useful it is. You can put a big tool on it and put that anywhere you want. You could have an assortment of little tools that you can bring, just bring to whatever project you're working on with you. I like to use it when I'm cutting a bunch of pieces at the table saw. I can sit this right beside it, set my cuts on it, and then take it over to my assembly table or the planer or wherever they have to go next. You can add other shelves, you can add drawers, you can do all kinds of different things to this. So basically this is just the foundation. It really is, because there's, there's whatever your imagination can come up with you can add to this. And again, it don't have to be built just like this, you can make it bigger, smaller, I've seen them where they put a shelf at the bottom of this and the lid of it opens so that you can set small hand tools in there. You want to demonstrate the sturdiness? <laughs> and it's not going to collapse under you or a larger tool. <laughs> because I always like being on my workbenches. <laughs> See you next week.